Hi guys, this is going to be a, a couple tutorials on uh, damn near perfect paint for your model cars. Um, <clears throat> first I want to tell you, um, your paint booth has to be totally clean, clean, for the, clean of dust and everything. And I've seen a couple of you guys are lying in your booths and uh, homemade booths with saran wrap. You can't do that. It's got to, that'll uh, cause static. With uh, static, it uh, it uh, pulls dust and everything in. This stuff here is painter painter's tape paper. Um, at the one end of mine, it's got the Stiff, sticky part right on it. Um, I had bought this a couple years ago, and I think it was twelve or thirteen bucks. And this is the um, the eight inch. Uh, it comes in a big roll, and I line my whole booth with it. And the reason I want to start with this, um, I'm gonna book, move my filter for you. Um, before I do anything, I get back here and clean my my fan and everything um, with a damp paper towel. Um, when you start anything, um, primer and everything, just clean all this out with a damp paper towel and before you shoot anything, um, just mist any, a little bit of wire, water, and that'll pull all the dust, anything, go on that. Um, and then when you, you'll notice when, uh, <coughs> when you, uh, when you do your primer then, after you're done with your wet sanding and all that, when you're done with your primer, pull it out and do all new paper and that because primer is, believe it or not, it's uh, dusty. So when you're done with your primer, pull all that out and start fresh when you start doing your prime colors. Um, and it will save you a lot of headaches. Um, That's the start of a good paint job, is prep, 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 prep. And then, believe it or not, it'll save a lot of headaches, because all that dust and that, um, I didn't, I don't do this, because I can't see, so I save the, don't do the top, but I, I, I wet the top of it with a little mist of water, so it, any little dust comes in here, it, goes right to it um if you have carpet in your room um watch how you walk in it and stuff like that to keep dust and then i use all my uh rubber carbs uh gloves make sure it's not the kind with the powder um make sure it's not the it's the powderless um <clears throat> um basically what I do I soak everything in the kit um with Dawn the dish soap with the bleach um I soak it overnight but you can get yourself a little bin but I just put it in the sink overnight um trees and all um once that's done overnight, I start saying I empty the sink out and refill it again. <coughs> um, refill up the sink and I start wet sanding. And um, I go to the body shop, supply store, and get it in the, the, sh the sheets of the stuff. The wet sand, wet dry. 
Um, I start with 400 and then go to 600. And uh, when I do the wet sanding, um, if it's got a hard dry line on it, like on this trunk, I put a piece of tape on it to keep the hard uh, line on it. Um, and I do all that. <clears throat> and that'll let you know if there's any body any body work on it. Um, like on El Camino, there was a big gouge on the side of the body. So I had to actually go down a little farther and took a lot of time to getting the gouge out of it. But you don't have to do much body work on these. But I just lightly sand them. And, um, but like on here, there's a body line on it. But I just take a little bit of tape. You don't want them to soft them lines up. So if you want it nice and crisp, put a piece of tape on it. And you'll have to do it twice. Do the top and the bottom. And it'll make you a nice crisp line when you're sand, wet sanding them. And you have to do it a couple times. See, I'm starting on this one on the caddy. Um, I was going to try to get the primer and all that for you guys, but I'm going to try to get it for October for the NNL in Toledo. So I'm going to take my time and you can see the color it's going to be. It's a hot pink tangerine, so I'm going to take my time for it. I got five months for it. Um, so I tape it off and so it's nice crisp bodywork lines. And uh I do 400 to 600 on the uh wet sanding. And then I do 800 and then I start my prime. And when I do my prime, I do 800, do the first prime, let it sit overnight, wet sand, 800,000, um, do my second coat of primer, and then I do uh, <coughs> 1,000 and 1,500, wet sand again, and here's where you got to start getting real picky about stuff, um, and I wear my gloves so I don't get my body oils on it, and I do... Um, um, fifteen hundred and two thousand, and then I prime again, and that's my last prime, and um, and then I start doing my color. And once I start doing my color, it's time for you to decide your your base colors. Um, I do depending on what colors I do. Um. If you're doing just base colors, uh, you can decide everything looks different on their different bases. I usually do white, black, silver, or primer. I usually do my four spoons. Um, <coughs> and when I do let my primer cure, Make sure it's in a sealed container so nothing gets on top of it. Um, that way it's easier to wet sand and nothing gets into it. And guys, make sure it's well worth the money to get one of these, these to me, uh, uh, painting stands. You can get them from 12 to 27 dollars on eBay depending on where you look um, <coughs> um, the ones from I seen from China you can get from depending on what auction um, GMS custom hobby outlet runs sales on them all the time I think I picked up this one for 13 bucks 
<coughs> check them out, and they have fantastic sales all the time. So check them out, and they have uh, good sales all the time. Um, and I did want to let you guys know, this is the primer I use. Um, I get it from my auto body supply guy. Uh, it's like four bucks a can. And it'll last you a long time. And I, you know, I do three, four coats on it because of how I do my body work. I know I'm kind of rushing it through. i am got so much, so much I want to try to explain it to you guys. Um, <clears throat> when I do my paint jobs, after you decide what your base coat is, I do, like I did the El Camino, I did uh, white as a base, but I shoot, oh, probably four to five inches, this is four and a half inches. But I do it like an overlapping pattern, just like a you would regular do a regular car. So I do like a 50% overlap, so you get good coverage. And I do 15 to 20 psi, um, and so there's not much overspray. Um, <clears throat> and between coats it takes me about when I do it it's in between coats I do I wait about 10 oh 8 to 10 minutes and then I start the next coat on this uh, lime gold candy I waited there's about four or five coats so it took me about an hour to shoot it and then after I shot it, took me about an hour to shoot it, and then uh, I put it, after I never moved it, and that's why I said I, you got to keep working with gloves so you don't want to get your fingerprints on it. And then took me about an hour and put it in my cabinet. I use a dehydrator. Ran it for about 10 minutes. And then forgot about it. Next morning I come out. Um, did a mist coat of clear on it. Put it back in the dehydrator. And then forgot it again. And the next day I did the flame, laid out the flames. So it's a long process. Um, you just gotta make sure there's nothing in it, and I always make sure you have one of these tack racks in it. Open it out, and make sure you don't use your bare fingers on it. Um, always wear your glove on, gloves on it, because once you get your skin oils on it, it'll... Fish eye your paint, your paint jobs. Okay, once you get your your uh, two tone, I mean uh, your paint base colors in. Uh, guys are wondered about your uh, how to do two tones and stuff. Basically, what I do or anything custom, the Tamiya paint it works the best. Just make sure you have a nice, sharp blade to do it. Um, do a mist coat of, one or two coats of mist, a clear, on your base color. That way it locks in your base color. Um, <clears throat> but this stuff is fantastic and it leaves a nice thin line when you're doing your colors and like I said I, I do 
real fine mist coats on my stuff. You know, I did four coats of a base on the El Camino. Then once you get all that done, I do three or four or five, maybe five coats of clear on uh, everything. Um, the same way when I shoot everything else um, in between. But the clear is a little thicker, so I got to bump up the, the pressure a little bit. I do it about 30 PSI. Um, I like I said, I use the the dupe color paint shop clear. And uh, I just add just a little bit of thinner to it so it sprays a little better. <coughs> um, you can but you don't have to. But I, I found out it's, it sprays just a little better if you thin, add a little thinner to it. Um, especially on if you're doing tape outs and stuff, it kind of levels it out a little better. On my fifth coat on it, um, I let it sit probably three or four days. And then I wet sand it 4,000 and 6,000 and do another three coats on it and then I'll let it sit another three days of course I've got the dehydrator which speeds it up a little bit I only let it put it in dehydrator for maybe a half hour but if you run tape inside the dehydrator I'd only put it in for maybe 10 minutes or so because it'll gum up the tape and uh, make you have a mess especially if you don't, don't if you have a don't have a temperature control uh, mine's got a temperature control so I turn it down a little bit <clears throat> and then I wet sand 6,000 and 12,000 and then I polish it out and to a, almost a mirror gloss. Um, one thing I want to let you know when you guys are doing automotive stuff it's real forgiving. Um, while you guys are painting it have your tweezers and toothpicks laying around because while you're spraying it, while it's wet, you can pick stuff out. Um, on the El Camino, I didn't notice there was a hair in it. And if I had noticed it, I could have got it out. And uh, I don't know if you can see it. But there's a, a big booger. Because after I let it dry, I tried to pick it out. and Because now it's in there and when I tried to get it out it pulled it down the primer and that's the only flaw in the whole paint job but if it would have noticed it when it was wet I could have got it out and and uh, would have fixed itself um, but that's about the extent of how to do a almost perfect paint job like I said just you know Dust control, dust control, dust control. And once you do that, you'll have a, a perfect paint job. Well, this is getting kind of long and wordy, so we're at 19 minutes. So I hope this helps you guys. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. So um, just let me know, and... Like I said, if you guys have any questions, let me know, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. You guys have a good one.